Welcome to the Simply for Life podcast. I'm Bethany Geddes, your host, a former diet and health nurse turned certified holistic nutritional consultant with over 16 years of experience in the health and wellness space. I'm here with Bruce Sweeney, Simply for Life founder and integrative nutritionist with over 30 years of expertise. Join us on the Simply for Life journey here as we explore nutrition, hormonal balance, and well-being for a longer, healthier life. Welcome to the show, Bruce. Good to be here and good to be seen. And most of all, I want to tell our audience, this is all happening because of you. You're putting all the work behind this. I just got to show up, answer your questions. But what I really enjoy, Bethany, is that your background, your level of expertise. So furthermore, we can connect and have better understanding of what we're trying to share with our audience. So that for that, I can say how grateful I am. And today is going to be a really good one. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is a great topic today. I think this one's all about how does cortisol affect one's weight? And this is a massive topic I see on a regular basis, especially in the last few years. This is really, I think, hit home for a lot of people. So kind of the first question, really, because I think a lot of people need it kind of broken down into segments, is what really is cortisol and why is it actually crucial to our body? Yeah, and depending on what you read or, or look, everybody knows cortisol as the stress hormone, right? Uh -huh. But what I like to call cortisol, because I'm afraid cortisol is getting a bad name right now, and I hope we're going to talk a little bit further into this because cortisol is so important to us. But it's an amazing hormone to have the switch to put things on and off. It's absolutely amazing to put our immune system on and off. Same thing when we need glucose or energy, same thing with our uh, blood pressure. It has many excellent mechanisms to help us live longer and better. But right now, because everybody's talking about cortisol, then there's more and more research coming on board. I have a fear pretty much like in the early 2005 to 2015. By 2015, when it was the carbs, everybody was bashing every single carbs. When we know yeah. there's good carbs, finally, and right. some that are not so good for us, right? But cortisol is vital. It's produced by our, our adrenals. Everybody says our adrenals are on top of our kidneys. And it's a response from our pituitary releasing uh, ACTH to talk to your adrenal and your cortisol. So uh, another thing, too, that I think more and more of our audience needs us to get to know is that beyond cortisol to understand your HPA access, which is key and it, they're all interconnected. Right. So cortisol is obviously definitely needed in the body. And when is it really needed for optimal health? Like for me, when I think of cortisol, the highest time is usually in the morning when we wake up and it needs, we need it to wake up. So what, when is it when we actually really need it? Yes. Well, in the morning, it's kind of, everybody talks about your para, um, uh, parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, it's you cooling off, your sympathetic, you want to start the day with higher cortisol, you're ready to go up on the beat, right, feeling good. But cortisol, it's extremely important to understand throughout the day, it starts high and it decreases. On the mechanism it does, first of all, to put the switch on, because there's physical, mental stress, trauma, financial stress. Mm -hmm. And if let's just say right now you and I are playing hockey and I'm giving you a check and I'm hurting your shoulder and there's basically going to be inflammation, your body, there's three lines of your immune system. You get the physical a mucous membrane or skin or nose, so forth, so on. You right. get the inner and you're, you have the ability to send a response that, okay, we need to reduce inflammation, right? We, right. want we want to prevent inflammation as much as we can. Also, uh, everybody uses this analogy, and it's a good one. I, I, I use this analogy all the time. If you've been chased by a bear, right? Yeah. You need, you need you. that <laughs> amount of cortisol. You, be you better learn how to run, yeah. but you need glucose. So yeah. whether it's coming out of your cell or from your liver, you get that glucose, blood pressure, and you have all these chemical reactions that all of a sudden, I don't care, but it's like having a hundred cups of coffee because I'm sure right. if you're getting chased by a bear, yeah. you're going to be some alert and you're going to be running. You're going <laughs> right. to learn to learn faster. You ever did about your life. Right. And it's also essential why it's so essential is because it's your sleep wake cycle. Hmm. That's okay. the one I think a lot of people are not talking enough. Your biological clock. It is so detrimental to understand the connection between our sleep wake cycle. And 
10 years ago, a lot of people were talking about cortisol. It would cause inflammation, it would reduce inflammation, so forth, so on. And there's many really good argument. But if you just look at the breaking point of poor sleep, the poor yeah. quality of sleep, which we can discuss more, it aggravates inflammation furthermore, blood glucose right. furthermore, disease furthermore, right? So the wake sleep cycle, I cannot say enough, the immune system, uh, controlling inflammation and controlling your immune system that it's off and on because there's many want to be expert they want to make you believe that you have to boost your immune system all the time right it cannot be boost all the time it's not a good thing we need to have it up and down right right and that's the problem i think a lot of people are in that hyperdrive mode of having their cortisol up in it for extended periods of time so having it up for extended periods of time how is this affecting their weight how is this relating well, I'm going to use the women as an example, because 70% of my clients are women. Yeah. As you know, here at Simply for Life, you got to know uh, Simply for Life. I believe that women are far more superior species than us, ah. more effective. The things that we're better at women, us men, is complaining when we're sick. <laughs> but the reality, and you've seen everybody here at Hot Office, all women, because they're doing stuff that they cannot do. But in my experience, you look at a teenager, teenager woman or yeah. stress that she has. Body can cope with it, even though it'll make it sound like it's the end of the world. Us, later on, her eyes were like, really, that's what you're panicking about? Then she becomes a woman and she marries. There's a little bit of stress there. She has kids, she has two kids. Okay, that's additional stress. Then the financial burden, then the mortgage. Then we get divorced and then we keep the kids. I'm talking from experience. Yeah. These are soldiers, the women I have. Yeah. The accumulation of keeping cortisol up over time, um, why we starting having issue with gaining weight and the weight is not going at the right place. You're seeing women with skinnier legs, skinnier arms all around their torso, their belly. Mm -hmm. Fat distribution is different. The number one thing we're not talking about is because we're seeing more and more insulin resistance. Yeah, I have seen that too. And I think we're in an era right now, Bethany, that we're, there's many champions out there. Benjamin Bikeman, I, I encourage everybody to follow him. He's at the forefront. He's one of the very few studying humans. But we need to change the game because we're testing blood glucose and A1C measurement of glucose for two or three months, which is great. But it doesn't give us a full story because you could have fasting insulin that's very high because it's working so hard to try to manage your blood glucose, but right. we're looking at blood glucose are fine. So don't forget, cortisol help us with the metabolism of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. It helps with our metabolism, right. uh, metabolism tremendously. But we're not using glucose as we should. And as we trek along in life as a women accumulation of having to switch on all the time, we start to have a dysregulated immune system, a dysregulate metabolism, a dysregulate amount of level. And instead of just saying, well, it's the issue with blood glucose, what we need to know is that when over time you have accumulation of cortisol that says high, mm -hmm. high afternoon, high at night, your four points cortisol we're talking about. The biggest problem we're seeing is that not only that we're not metabolizing food, not only we're not putting food, uh, fat distribution at the right place, it actually puts us in a state that we're sleeping uh, uh, poor. Yeah. Our, our mental health, we don't think the same, right? Um, we lose muscle mass and i think we've talked about this before yeah. this is another one too we need to start talking about because as you lose muscle mass and muscle integrity right uh it slows down the way we burn f uh, fuel it basically makes the insulin more resistant than anything our body's mm -hmm. more resistant than anything so there's many uh factors so what i'm trying to say is that cortisol becomes a master hormone and what i tell my clients is like you and I, Bethany, we're having a big family reunion for the month of July. Yeah. I mean, we're doing it. We're going all the way. We're inviting all our family, all our hormones, all of them. But we have two, one black sheep in the family. We always have, right? <laughs> like, 
Let's yeah. forget to invite them. Let's, yeah. let's just pretend we forget. So the second of July, it's a big family room. All our hormones are there and we want to connect because hormone talks to each other, right? And as we age gracefully, it's more important that they start talking to each other. So finally the back sheep arrive. We don't know how they found out about this party, but they arrived. And they hit the bar and they're intoxicated because that's what they've been doing all their life. Cortisol, high level. Yeah. And now they're loud, obnoxious, and all the attention goes theirs. Yeah. So we're starting mm -hmm. to use, lose some of our family members. They're shy. They don't like to get into. So it affects the rest of the family. So hormones right. are like a perfect harmony. So when you keep your cortisol too high, this is when the whole endocrine system becomes dysfunctional. Right. We're talking your thyroid conversion at T4, T3, uh, your sex uh, hormones, estrogen, progesterone, everything, the whole package deal. That's so interesting. And it is, it's like a bad, you know, bad person at the party, basically. I get that with the cortisol. Um, so you mentioned food. So let's talk about like the dietary kind of aspects of this. So what certain foods and dietary sort of practices actually help sort of manage stress, promote more resilience, particularly in relation to cortisol levels, if we are experiencing this like hyperdrive? Yeah. Well, I was in a French debate again not too long ago, and one of my good friends was on it, and we don't agree on a lot of stuff, but we're really good friends, right? We travel together, conversations. But I think it's a French thing. We love to argue, and we're still good friends. We have supper, and these days it's rare. Mm -hmm. And he was very adamant. I mean, I get it, and I said, you're totally right. You know, he's a big fan of omega-3 fats. He's a big fan of avocado, healthy fats for magnesium, mm -hmm. dark chocolate, magnesium also. Um, I was talking about fermented food because fermented food, and you agree with that. I said fermented food for me is on the top three, as some of the food you're suggesting, because um, they're full of nutrients, okay? Uh, they provide the raw material that we need. It's good for your stomach. It's good for your whole digestive system. It's good for your gut microbiome, really activating those bugs out there to be really working for us. Right. Um, good quality protein, but I'm a firm believer that we going to see more and more different plant coming out there and it's going to take 10 years to come back and say just eat a whole food diet yeah. and let's eliminate things like junk food refined carbohydrates pretty much what we're saying because what we're saying for a healthy diet like what constitutes a healthy diet when you and i do a healthy diet pretty much address any cause unless you have any allergies so forth so on right. so but yeah omega-3 food fatty fish good quality protein right um green vegetables absolutely they're full of these nutrients berries because of vitamin c we need so much but the one that i think we need to put on top of this because at the end of the day we need to not just look at cortisol but talk to your adrenals right is sodium interesting we need sodium and we need to put back salt good quality salt in our uh, diet because Himalayan salt might be 40, 45% sodium, but it has many other electrolytes and um, many other minerals that are vital for proper adrenal functions. And I, I think that we're just caving off, the science is telling us that adrenal fatigue is rare. As a naturopath, we were told this, and I've used that many times, but when you start looking at your adrenal, whether even your cortisol is low, because there's symptoms of having low cortisol, that's mm -hmm. not a good thing too. When you start looking at that and you look at cortisone, cortisone is high also. So it means the adrenals are definitely working or adrenals are always working, right? right. And it still comes down to your hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal function and it's another thing too we're talking providing the raw material the right food because when you have inflammation or you need to recruit uh cortisol it, it's not a question of recruiting it it's about converting cortisone to cortisol and you need the raw material to do that it's a very important so i believe a whole food diet eliminating the excess amount of caffeine the excess amount of sugar pop be in a state of dehydration also doesn't help. Also, you're not drinking enough water. And when we're drinking uh, things now, because I like to call them food-like product, right. our juice or God knows what we're putting in our body, it's liquid, but we're causing more harm than anything because some of these 
chemicals because they're chemicals yeah. our body again has a stress response to this so it, it's not just about physical and mental stress sometimes it's what we yeah. put in their, uh, our body too that causing the stress I find a lot of people start their day on coffee alone. So when you kind of start the body on caffeine, this is actually increasing the cortisol, isn't it? Oh, my geez. And mind you, in the morning, it's good. Uh, but what people don't see is that there's more talk about mTOR right now. And when we have caffeine with sugar, in high cortisol, higher normal should be in the morning. We're hyper simulating ourselves because right. we have low energy, so forth, so on. It has a significant, I think it's four, seven times higher and stays higher, your mTOR level, which uh, can be in the game of, we're talking about cancer, short lifespan, affecting your telomeres, which is a marker of lifespan. All in all, it's just not a good thing. So when you have coffee, you're not having issues with sleeping, one or two coffee, it's not bad in the day. But I think it's the afternoon. I tell my client, I said, if you're having coffee in the afternoon and you're crashing after, definitely you have issues with your cortisol. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's not normal. There's a lot of people I know that go through like pots and pots of coffee and it's insane, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a different yeah, thing. Unreal, but, eh? Yeah. So kind of going into like, the the food seems to be more of like the healthy fats whole foods like you said salt so when we talk about salt we're not talking about table salt but more um you like the himalayan salt what about sea salt that's why i like to talk with you about this thanks for that i would have forgot that yeah yeah white salt they're right don't touch it it's man-made emelian salt i prefer it because it comes from the mountain of emelian if you have it or afghanistan so there's no environmental contaminants into it sea salt kosher salt, but sea salt, I still like it. I like the taste of it, but with microplastic right now and environmental toxins in our ocean floor, and I do also tests uh, for environmental contaminants, so for so mm -hmm. on, I think it's best to avoid it. I'm not saying it's bad for the rest of your body. It's still really good quality salts. We've been using it in culinary uh, a place. It has its place, but home for me, I just bring Himalayan salt. I make sure I know where it's coming from because there's no uh, microplastic or mm -hmm. environmental contaminants into it. Very interesting. Yeah. So that's the Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. I think they have gray salt. Suggest, eh? I think they have a gray salt as well. I wasn't sure. They do. But yes. yes. Pink. And there's an Hawaiian uh, darker salt or uh, gray salt. If you buy good, but you won't like the price, we're talking like, uh, four little ounce will be like $22, oh, something yeah. like that. Make Unless, <laughs> yes, maybe down your quarter is cheaper, but here in the Maritimes, when we yeah. see it, it's like, oh my God, how oh can they goodness. get away with that, right? That's crazy. So, with with food, obviously food comes first. That's what we want people to do is eat more whole foods. But in terms of sort of like specific supplements that really help, I would say, relax the body if you are in like this hyperdrive of cortisol levels, um, so what kind of supplements would actually help support a healthier stress response? Well, there's one I'll finish off with it is my new favorite. I love it. I'm seeing the results because I do a lot of, of work with men and women and at the same time doing testing. Uh, but I want to be clear, if you're talking to Betty or myself or other holistic nutritionists, naturopath, dietitians, there's a slew of them that help. And sometimes they come with preference, right? I'm a big fan of magnesium glycinate, right? Uh -huh. It's more bioavailable. Uh, I'm a big fan of omega-3, vitamin T3, uh -huh. ashwagandha, uh -huh. assuming the client doesn't have fatty liver because now we're starting to see correlations with ash ashwagandha and liver disease uh, could uh, furthermore aggravate uh, liver enzyme. But other than that, it's a wonderful product, right? Uh, Rodelia. L-theanine, I'm a big fan of L-theanine because it helps most of my clients calm down. Remember, most of them have high cortisol. They tends to have poor sleep or dysregulated right. sleep and they're not getting restored sleep. Right. And until you get into that conversation, they'll tell you, no, it's okay. Okay, but they have one or two nights per week, they sleep well. So managing sleep for me is at the core of everything, right? Right. So L-theanine, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm a big fan of B-complex also. Yeah. B-complex, uh, I think it's 
everybody's on board with that. And of course, vi vitamin C. The vitamin C has its place, assuming the client is not eating enough fruits and vegetables. But my new favorite that trumps all of them, and I have no affiliation, it's getting harder to get, it's Tonga Ali. Okay. And I will tell you why. Remember cortisol, we invite all our family this summer and the black sheep arrives and they're allowed in open auctions. So it's offsetting the party, everybody. Tungali is one of the most wonderful adaptogen we have. A, remember, most women and men, they'll complain. We're not 16 anymore. Libido, intimacy, they're not as interested. Mm -hmm. you know, we used to be once per weekend having a date night. I just don't care anymore and I'm afraid. So I hear this conversation. Energy is low. Yeah, but functionality, what it does, and I see it with my own eyes. I have men get this; they want to go on testosterone therapy. They know I'm very open about testosterone therapy. I used them in the past, and I'm just not interested in my age to do testosterone therapy. What it does, it basically improve the right ratio of your luteinizing, follicizing, stimulating hormone. So, a whether you're trying to conceive or b improve your sperm count, um, ovulation. Estrogen, progesterone ratio to help uh, mm -hmm. improve the growth, but it also reduces cortisol and your sex hormone binding globulin. Hmm. Now, it won't impact your morning cortisol, it will impact your afternoon cortisol and your sex hormone binding globulin. Many times, my men, they want to go on testosterone therapy. They have a lot of total testosterone, but no bioavailable. That's the one we want. When you rectify that, now they start having more bioavailable testosterone. And you're seeing also with Tonga Ali, beyond improving cortisol, uh, it improved DHEA level in women. And it has a peripheral impact on your particle size for lipid, for cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So all in all, it does a lot of things. And I was skeptical. I got introduced by this in 2000. 21 in California, biohacking conference. I got fortunate to make wonderful, meet wonderful people there. Mm -hmm. One of them was Han Andrew Huberman. I'm not too sure. You must, you must know Andrew Huberman. Um, and I was kind of skeptical, right? So I figured I'll try it. And I didn't see anything because not to brag, you and I were somewhat healthy, right? So it's hard to see the difference. Yeah. But I knew after 10 weeks, there was something different. That's all I'm going to say. There was something. I was not Superman. Um, I didn't want to the gym. Didn't really change anything for me at the gym. But definitely, uh, yeah, it was different. So, hey, and it's really good for nitroxid productions. My men will report in the morning um, that they have better erection going on in the morning. And that's also an indicator of your level of testosterone. I'm just hearing good results. And there's starting to be more and more research on Tonga Ali. The only thing you got to be careful, there's only a brand I trust because many of it comes from Indo Indonesia. Okay. There's been some side effect report because it's loaded with pollutants, contaminants, so forth, so on. So you got to be really careful about the brand you're buying. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's my. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting one to hear about the, are you kind of more, it sounds like you're more like versed giving it to the guys than the women, but no, both, both men and both? women. Oh, interesting. And are they on this for a long period of time? Or is this like sort of a short cycle that they have to do? I was just asked this this morning about ashwagandha, how long my wife should stay on it. I'm a big fan that stay on it as, as, as long as, you, and once you start improving your symptoms, I really don't think that you have as much use for it. Again, that's my opinion because I come from food first. Yeah. I was never in the supplement industry first. There's this place for it. But Tonga Ali, for me, I'm here to tell you that I'm going to use it for the rest of my life. Uh, I love the benefits. I like to keep my testosterone in the high normal naturally, my bioavailable. And um, my recuperation time that I have to say I know is better. That I know. Other than that, I can't tell anything different. It would be like my clients ask me sometimes, do you take vitamin D3? My vitamin D3? No, I don't take it because I expose myself to the sun. I don't yeah. need it. So uh, to your question, usually three to six months. But when you have a client who's just going to rely on 
supplements and mm -hmm. you're still bringing insult to their body yeah stay on it until because lifestyle change trumps right it trumps oh. medication it trumps supplements and when you just do lifestyle change and have supplements these tools you just expedite your process to start feeling better right right well that's great so other than sort of like the lifestyle food is always the number one. I know you mentioned sleep is a big one too. And we've talked about supplementation. What other kind of personalized plan of action do you usually give to people in terms of um, giving them sort of like an action plan? Yes. Well, and it's funny because a client the other day came to see me and she says, well, you suggest this to my sister. I say, yes, because sleeping it's something i suggest to everybody yeah there's you can't reinvent sleep so for me i'm a big fan of you sleep first of all bedroom temperature should be between 18 and 20. the humidity level should be around 40 45 because we work our lungs over time we wake up dehydrated right. and if you're the woman right. who enjoys weighing three to four pounds lighter in the morning that's not a good thing for me because it just means you're dehydrated and your room temperature Humidity level is low. So that increases your cortisol also. It creates a stress. Having too much blue rays in a bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, there's these advocates they will say you have blue rays and your I call it a third eye, but penile gland won't produce melatonin. It still does, but it will give a small pulsation. So you're not getting that restorative sleep, your theta, beta wave, and REM, REM one, REM two. And also two hours before what you do, right? I suggest uh, yoga Nidra, I cannot say enough because Yoga Nidra is self-meditated, it's half an hour, it brings you between hypnotic and sleep state, they call it the yogi sleep. Mm -hmm. The profound effect it has on your cortisol, it's absolutely amazing. And I tell my client, you have to learn to laugh, you gotta learn to have fun again, you gotta surround mm -hmm. yourself with the right people, you gotta stop judging yourself. We're not talking enough about this. And loving yourself the more you love yourself the more you'll start exercising but we need to talk about exercise for a second yeah i'm a fan of all exercise hit workout big fan of it anything that's intense anybody who has high cortisol anything long duration hit workout i'm a big fan of resistant training regardless four yeah. times a week muscle integrity is extremely important but muscle integrity and resistant training gets your body of all the exercise to produce more what growth hormone growth hormone is the antidote to cortisol if you do growth hormone cortisol it's very hard to get high high uh, cortisol very hard but this is sensitive but if you do weight bearing it helps reduce cortisol and another thing too is walk you can walk anywhere doing light projects meditation breathing from the nose learning to breathe from the nose right mm -hmm. um being uh being surrounded in a good environment it's also important eating alone not in front of a screen or having good companionship right yeah these are tools but one thing i try to get my clients the most is listen Benny. many years ago everybody talks about stress we had better coping mechanism today uh, you look in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, we're talking about the Great Famine, mm -hmm. Great Depression, the war. Yeah. These were stressors. And women then explode in weight. Mind you, their nutrition was better than it is right now, even though they were starving. They still would, they would do intermittent fasting, but with good food at the same time. Right. But over the years, and we've seen this, you and I, when I was practicing 25 years, 30 years, or 25 years ago with 24 years ago with simply for life the parents would watch the news at six o'clock at night yeah then we go about their chore prepare food for the kids for the school next day so forth so on the parent today they're 100 miles an hour kids are everywhere in curriculum activities while they're waiting for the kids they're uh, strolling we get home we try to cool off by watching netflix we go to bed, we're wired, we have our phone beside us in case yeah. the president of the United States is gonna call us. <laughs> and then and then uh, we have the electromagnetic field. Yeah. And the industry has done a really good job to tell us because the research industry has, has told us it's not bad for you. It's true, it's not bad. When we look at how long it was tested for, 
you know, I've always said this and I've repeated this many times. I don't smoke. And I know, not to be arrogant, if I would start smoking today for 30 days, good chance I could tell you, Bethany, that I'm not worried about lung cancer unless I'm right. really bad lucky. Right. But in 10, 15 years times from now, maybe I'll tell you a different story, right? right. Yeah. So the poison, it's sometimes not just the dose, but it's the duration of the poison. The so yeah. We have electromagnetic field. We have blue rays. We're disconnected. There's a bleep that comes on the cell phone. Wake up. We check it out. So cell phone should be outside the bedroom. Yeah. Plain and simple. It's it's very different. It's changed a lot. We've got more cell phones. Yeah, everybody's attached to their phone. There's more TVs in the bedroom, things like that. People use computers a lot. So a lot more of that um, electromagnetic, like what you discussed. So that's a huge thing for a lot of people. And, and even like I see so many times now, like young little kids, like with screens all the time, like there's not a lot of like, go outside and play, you know, it's like, here's a screen, you know, so it just seems to be a lot of that, which is very unfortunate. Um, so basically how is a consultation call going to actually help individuals struggling with this related issue? Well, we possess the tools. You and I have a set of tools that can really expedite the progress of our clients. Mm -hmm. Because one thing with cortisol or trying to assess yourself on Google, you can go, you can make your cortisol even worse because you might think that all of a sudden you got a brain tumor. Yeah. You might think you have cancer, cardiovascular yeah. disease. It's a heart attack you're having. So we have the ability to suit you and save you so much time because if you're ready to take action on your health, say, listen, this is my time. I'm fed up of how I feel. I want to take yeah. control, right? So I think it will save you. And by all means, if you're going to start following the TikTokers and the social media, again, have a real person in front of you to start that engagement because some of the symptoms and the questions we ask will for sure align you in the right direction. And another thing too I want to share with you on this is come back because there's so much to talk about the cell phone. You know, no wonder our young adults are uh, are judging themselves and feeling they don't have self-worth. You right. know, I don't have a cell phone on me most of the time. I'm weird that way. Might have told you this. I use my cell phone time is always less than 45 minutes per week. I don't mm -hmm. have a, no, a, a phone in my office ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it worked for me. But the reality is that 95%, that's my opinion, I think, of what we see on social media is fake. Yes. So then you have people showing that they're on vacation all the time. They have a new car. They have a new dress. They might be full of debt, credit card jacked up. But yeah. there's a generation looking out there, so let's, I don't have this. I'm yeah. not traveling, right? And we have a friend of ours that funniest guy ever. If you look at the video, oh my God, maybe I'm saying too much. Too bad. <laughs> if you look at his video, he looks like a Barbie. He looks like he's 32 GQ. If you see him in person, he's just normal. Yeah. The fact that he makes him look, himself look so good on video. Yeah. That when you see him perfect, he looks ugly. Oh, right? yeah. And now his nickname, we long time boys, we teach it. Yeah. We call him ugly now. Oh, <laughs> so, but it's, but it's we, true. Like it's usually, if they say something along the lines of it's like 5% of people's real lives are shown. Right. Like you said, people are showing sort of the highlights of, you know, what's going on. Like, oh, someone has a better relationship. Someone has better health. Like, you know, like they have that new thing. They've gone on vacation again and you always feel like you're lacking. So I think there's also people coming away from social media because of the stress of them feeling like whatever they're doing isn't yeah. enough. So oh, it's just like it's sad. And for most of us, and it's even affecting people our age, right? Yeah. They feel like, oh, my God, right. My my job, I don't think it's providing enough for me. And, you know, be where your two feet are right now. And mm -hmm. one thing I always tell my clients, for me, my with my heart conditions, my biggest blessing is that I wake up every day and I have a start to, a, a chance to start new every day. Mm -hmm. And I have the love of my wife with me, so I'm very blessed with that. But I have obstacles. I have stress like everything else. Mm -hmm. And what makes me deal more effective with those stresses because I've applied these coping mechanisms, tools, nutrition, supplement, exercise, that I know it's not going to create a burden on my health mm -hmm. and I want to live longer. And this is like having a credit card. I put money on the credit card. I make sure I pay it off before 21 days. So I don't pay interest. Right. If you don't pay it over time, the interest will catch up to you. That's, That's what cortisol does to you. It will right. catch up. Right. It's so, I think it's so important just for everybody just to realize that like, 
it's part of it is what comes up for me is being present. And I think, you know, like myself included is a big one is being grateful, I think, for what you have, no matter what, because, you know, you kind of look out at your neighbor and see or is on social media and see like, they have it better than me, but really, like everyone has struggles, right. And um, that's kind of part of the stress, too, I think, for a lot of people um, is kind of looking around to see what other people are doing. But it's being really grateful for even just the small things that you have in your life and staying present. So thank you. So we much. started the day. Sorry. Yeah, we started the day, Claudia and I, it's a ritual. One thing we're grateful for, and I suggest to my clients, it cannot be material. Like this morning, we're grateful for Leo. Leo's mm -hmm. our bulldog. Come home. He's always, it's like he's never seen us. I know. He's so <laughs> happy to see us. You know how the dogs are. Yeah. yeah. I don't get the same response from Clayton all the time. When I'm leaving for a day, I come back. <laughs> say, hey, how about you? But Leo yeah. is like ecstatic. And take a break from yourself. Yeah. I like to take Sunday to have a break from me because I can get on my own nerves sometimes. Yeah. Because as an entrepreneur, I think 10 years, 15 years, you don't want to do that. And I don't live in the past. The past is an open book for me to go in. It's like I made that mistake because I made so many mistakes, not terrible or criminal mistake, but a lot of mistakes. I made them all, but I can go in and say, ah, I did this. I'm not willing to do this and shine on today because today is a new day. We don't have that opportunity every day. You know, why is it that you think about this, Benny, we, we all here, we lose, lose one and only then we are grateful to be alive, right? Exactly. We're alive right now. That's what matters. And just the fact that you realize that and you're willing to take one action, like the one action I'm going to call Bethany or Bruce or a consultant right there, it will lower your cortisol. That's a benefit mm -hmm. right there. Even if you don't take any actions, just the fact physiologically, you know, you're doing something for yourself. Exactly. Great words of wisdom today. So thank you for that, Bruce. I really appreciate it here today. So best. yeah, so we're going to leave some of the links here for all the supplements that you talked about as well, because that's going to be part of obviously, if anybody wants to kind of check those out and also consultations as well. So don't forget to share this episode with family and friends, everybody, and stay tuned for more on the Simply for Life journey in good health. Thank you, Bethany. Bye, everybody.